Alright, what's going on everyone? Today we'll be going over one of the few PLLs which is actually named quite well. It's the F perm. So if you're wondering why this F perm is named so well, well, I mean, here's the algorithm. And of course, the first letter that comes to mind is, of course, F. That's a really long algorithm. But all jokes aside, there's actually a really nice way to remember this F perm algorithm but I'll go through how it's done right now. So yeah, if you're interested in more specific tips uh, and tricks to memorize this algorithm, I'll put the timestamp to that in the video right here. I'll also include um, a lot more timestamps in the description down below. So if you're interested in anything specific in this video, feel free to click on the timestamps and navigate your way around. So unlike the F perm algorithm, the recognition for the F perm is actually a lot easier. That's because F perms have this very distinct three by one bar that's usually held on the left side. So this is the most distinct thing about the F perm because it's pretty much one side that's fully solved. The other sides kind of look like sort of random colors because there's no headlights or matching colors at all. So if you get the F perm from either one of these angles, it can be quite difficult to recognize. But if you get the F perm facing the three by one bar, that's usually quite easy to recognize. So you may have noticed that these two angles of the F perm kind of actually look like an E perm, and that's because they're actually really similar. So this is actually an F perm, and over here we have an E perm, and from these angles they look really quite similar. But then turning it around, looking at the bar, you can easily see that this is the F perm and this is the E perm. So the way to recognize from these angles that this is still an F perm is to look at the opposite colors on the left side here. Or if you're holding it from this angle, the opposite colors on the right side. So E perms will never have opposite colors next to each other. They will always be adjacent colors next to each other, no matter which side you're looking at. So that's how you know there's no three by one bar and it's an E perm. If you have these opposite colors that are right next to each other, then you can deduce that the three by one bar is on this side. And so even without looking over here, you will know that it's an F perm. So once you've recognized that you have an F perm, either by looking at the three by one bar or deducing that there's a bar at the back, make sure you hold the bar on the left side before you start doing the algorithm. So if you first look at the F perm algorithm, it does look very long. But good news is if you've learnt the T perm or even the J perm before, the F perm algorithm will be very easy to remember. And that's because the middle part of the algorithm is actually a T perm. So the algorithm starts with these setup moves, R prime, U prime, F prime. And these moves are usually quite easy to remember. R prime, U prime, F prime. After these three setup moves, then we start the T perm. So if you've done the T perm before, this next part should be quite easy. But just in case you don't know how to do the T perm, I'll quickly go through some tips on memorizing the T perm as well. But if you're interested, I'll link the T perm tutorial here as well, so you can check that out if you're interested. So T perm starts off with a sexy move, which is the R U R prime U prime. And then here I like to remember that I do an extra R prime followed by an F and then I reset my right hand with an R2. Next up it's U prime R prime U prime. For the last five moves instead of remembering what moves I do I like to track this F2 all pair. So first of all I want to put this F2 all pair in this position. So you'll notice that after I do this R I have this pretty much this F2 all pair going into this slot. I want to move it here first, so like that, and then I can insert this F2 all pair into the back slot like this, and that solves the F perm. So just in case that was your first time learning the F perm and you didn't quite get everything, I'll go through it quickly again just to make sure you've well gotten everything. 
So once again, it starts off with R prime, U prime, F prime, going into the T perm, which starts off with a sexy move, R U R prime, U prime. And then I like to remember how my hand moves. So do an extra R prime, index finger follows through with the F, and then reset my right hand doing the R2. Next up, U prime, R prime, U prime. And then after I do the next R move, I can think of putting this F to a pair into this slot using U, R prime, U, R, which is pretty much the standard way of inserting an F to a pair into a back slot. So if you've been quite observant throughout the video, you may have noticed some of the special finger tricks that I've been using throughout the algorithm. So the first finger trick, which is the third move of the algorithm, which is this F prime move, I like to do with my thumb pushing up on the bottom right corner like this. So the benefit of using this finger trick is that in the algorithm, when you do the R prime, U prime, F prime, your thumb is already in position to do that F prime. So you don't need to regrip anything. I've seen people do the first three moves like this, doing the U prime and then regripping for the F prime. The problem with that is that you've just done a U prime with your index finger and then you have to regrip to do the F prime with your index finger again. So that's quite inefficient because the regrip does take a lot of time. Doing the F prime with your thumb eliminates that regrip and makes the algorithm just flow a lot better. Also, another finger trick that's quite useful, and I've mentioned this in a lot of my previous PLO tutorials, which is this U pinch move. This is a very common finger trick to use because a lot of the times, especially in the F perm when you're doing the sexy move, your index finger is almost always set up perfectly to do that U pinch move. So definitely get used to doing the U pinch move because otherwise you'll have to regrip your right hand whenever you want to do a U and that does slow the algorithm down because every regrip means that you're moving your hand and you're not actually moving a layer. So it does take some time. So definitely try practicing this U pinch move if you don't already know how to do that. So the benefit of using those finger tricks is that if you do, you'll notice that the F perm, even though it's a really long algorithm, it's actually regripless, as in you don't need to regrip throughout the algorithm before or afterwards. So to show what I mean, I'll do the algorithm again, and this time pay attention to how my hands move during the algorithm. So once again, starts off with the setup moves into a T perm. And then insert this F12 pair at the back. You'll notice that throughout the algorithm, before and afterwards, I didn't have to regrip. And so that's the benefit of using these advanced finger tricks. You won't have to regrip, and that way your F perm can flow very smoothly throughout. So, as always, finally, AUF for F perms are actually quite easy to recognize. Once again, they're recognized by the 3 by one bar, so none of these pieces move throughout the algorithm. So, if these colors are matching the colors on the side, then you won't have to do an AUF after the algorithm. So here's an example where we will have to do an AUF at the end of the algorithm. And that's because this three by one bar is not matching the side color. Instead, this orange three by one bar should be at the back here, matching the orange side. Of course, instead of aligning the orange up, we of course can just do an AUF at the end, but it's important to recognize that AUF before we do the algorithm. So in this case, we know we have to do a U AUF at the very end to solve the cube. So once again, the algorithm is shown. And then at the end here, we just need to add an extra U move to make sure that the cube is solved. All right, so that's it for this F perm tutorial. If you guys have any questions regarding anything in this video, definitely let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to respond to all of them. Like this video if you learned something new. Subscribe if you want to see more similar videos and share these videos with people you may know who are learning full PLO or who want to learn full PLO. It definitely helps grow the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everyone's support and I'll see you guys very soon.